Hi guys! Bamboo Lab's most recent printer is out. It's the P1P and in this video we will check all the details. You want to know more about this printer? Then stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! My name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, roughly a month ago, Bamboo Lab released their new 3D printer to the world. Following the X1 and X1 Carbon, they now have the new P1P. This new printer is very similar with the X1 series, but with a few less features and therefore at a smaller price. But this doesn't mean that the printer has less quality or performance. In fact, the P1P has the same mechanics as the X1 series, which means it can reach the same speeds and accelerations. It can also do vibration compensation and pressure advance to maintain a good printing quality. Also has a direct drive extruder and bed leveling sensor. One of the main differences, and that pops out right away when we look at it, is that the P1P doesn't have an enclosure. However, it's possible to print one of the many enclosures available with your favorite color and make your printer unique. Ok, enough chit chat, let's check the machine. The printer comes nicely packed and with a box in the middle. Every piece that can move during transportation is safely secured. At the top left side, there is a cable sticking out. This is where we will connect the display. Here we can see the X and Y axis. Same as the X1 carbon, the P1P is equipped with carbon rods on the X axis. The X and Y axis are driven by belts. And at the back is possible to adjust the belt's tension. The Z-axis is driven by three lead screws. The printer is also equipped with a filament chute at the back. The printing volume is 256 by 256 by 256 mm. Unlike the X1 series printers, the P1P comes with a texturized print surface instead. The Z-axis is locked by three screws for transportation so we need to remove them first before turning the printer on. The foam underneath the bed can be removed later on after turning the printer on. Inside the box we have a few accessories and spare parts. Included is the 2.7 inch display that we need to install, 1 kg of PLA filament, the spool holder, PTFE tube, the power cord, double side tape, a spare hot end, a needle to unclog the nozzle, a couple of nozzle wipers, some allen keys, a blade so we can use as a scraper and there's a model we can print to use it with, a PTFE tube anchor and a small booklet. For the first orders, Bamboo Lab is offering a few parts as gift, such as the light, camera and the big auxiliary cooling fan. Normally, the printer does not come with these parts installed from stock, so they are upgrades that we can order and install if we want to. So, let's get the printer ready to run. First thing we need to do is to remove every bit of tape and then install the display. The connector has orientation, so you need to be careful when doing this step. Also, make sure the connector is pushed in all the way and locked. Then we arrange the cable so it does not get pinched and then we insert the display and slide it to the left to lock it. Next, we need to remove the three locking screws. Each screw is located near each lead screw and there is a red arrow pointing to the screws. Next is the PTFE tube. Insert it all the way in on the print head. The PTFE tube anchor is secured by a couple of screws at the back of the printer, like this. And the tube coming from the print head attaches to it. 
Next is the spool holder. It is supposed to be installed at the back side of the printer. To secure it, we first need to remove this screw from the back panel. And then use that screw and an additional one to secure the spool holder. The printer comes with a micro SD card already inserted on the card slot. Now it's time to connect the power cord at the back of the printer and turn it on. And follow the instructions on the screen before we can run the first print. First, we select region, and then we can scan the QR code to set up the Wi-Fi and pair the printer with our Bamboo Lab account. This step can be skipped at this point. Next are the terms and conditions which we need to accept to continue. Then it's the question if we want to share the experience or any issue with Bamboo Lab. And finally, the self-tests where the machine will run a few calibrations. While doing the self-tests, the Z-axis will raise and at that time we can access the foam and remove it. Once the tests are done, the printer is ready for the first print. As you can see, it's very easy to get the printer ready and in just a few minutes. The structure is all metal and very sturdy and the axes run on a Core XY setup. From this point on, we have access to all the menus and options on the display. Working with the display is very easy and user-friendly. At the left, we have four tabs. Pressing the right button will let us access the options from the current selected tab. For the main menu, we can start or stop the loaded print, as well as checking the nozzle and bed temperatures, print speed and print time. On the second menu, we can change the nozzle temperature, bed temperature, print speed, unload filament, turn the cooling fan on and off, turn the light on and off, and access the AMS. We can also move the extruder, Z-axis, and X and Y-axis. On the third menu, we can access our Bamboo Lab account, Wi-Fi connection, memory card used and free space, printer name, firmware version, run the self-tests, change the auto sleep time, do a factory reset and check the printer's serial number. And on the fourth menu, we access the memory card and in here, we can select the file to print. The memory card already has some already sliced models ready to print. The print head cover is secured by magnets, so accessing the print head components is super easy. The hot end on the P1P is stainless steel, same as the X1, but not the X1 carbon, which is hardened steel. Also with the extruder gears, which are steel, same as on the X1, but not on the X1 carbon, which are hardened steel. If we want to replace the hot end, it's very easy, as we only need to remove a couple of screws. The lever at the left, it's what triggers the filament cutter. Before unloading the filament, the cutter cuts the filament so that it can be correctly unloaded. At the back is the chute, where the excess of filament from the purchase fall out. And next to it is the nozzle wiper to clean the tip of the nozzle. At the right is an opening which on the X1 series is where the air filter is located. But that filter is not included on the P1P, neither is the fan at the back to extract the air. The printer also includes the sensors for vibration compensation and bed leveling. For the bed leveling, it probes the bed 36 times. Unlike the X1 series, the P1P does not have the LiDAR sensor to automatically calibrate the flow and check the first layer. This option is also not available as upgrade because this printer does not support the LiDAR sensor, so that adjustment needs to be done by the user. As usual, the slicer from Bamboo Lab comes with the profiles for this printer and for different filament types, so minor adjustments will be needed if any. 
the P1P also connects to the slicer through the cloud using Wi-Fi, which means we can control the printer remotely and to start a print, we can load the file on the memory card or send it remotely using the slicer. As with other plates, it's recommended to use glue on the texturized plate. Bamboo Lab has this new glue that is perfect for this plate. It's marked as strong adhesive and unlike the glue sticks we normally use, this one is liquid so it does not leave marks on the prints or residue like the other glue stick does. Ok, it's time to load some filament and start our first print. To load the filament, we need to insert it all the way in the PTFE tube at the back of the printer. For our first test, we decided to print the already sliced Benchy that is included on the memory card. The print time of this Benchy is only 17 minutes. Next, we loaded our traditional test cube on the slicer and printed it. And this is how our first prints turned out. The Benchy, which was printed in 17 minutes, turned out nice. We can see some lines, but we first suspected the filament we used. Since this was an already sliced model, and with the settings for Bamboo Labs on filaments, we decided to repeat the print, but this time using their filament brand. The result is much better. We can still see the horizontal smooth area, which is where the print speed is much faster. Other than that, it looks pretty good. The cube also turned out with very good results. The walls are smooth and in spite of the speed, we can see no ghosting. Both the cube and the benchy were printed with PLA filament. As for the upgrade parts, they are very easy to install. Inside and behind the display, there is a board where the light and camera connect to. For the LED light, we need to first print a couple of pieces. One is the box where the light strip will be installed in, and the other is the cover. We first pass the wires through the hole and attach the light. Then we slide in the cover. On the frame, we add a couple of double side tape strips and use them to secure the light. And then we connect the wires on the board here. For the camera, is even easier. We first attach the camera on the front left corner And then we pass the flat cable from the outside of the frame and over the top. Then carefully we open the lock from the connector, insert the flat cable and lock it. For the big auxiliary cooling fan, the procedure is similar with the lights. We first need to print a support and then attach it and connect it to the board located at the back. For everything Bamboo Lab has detailed instructions, which is very nice. On their wiki page we can also find lots and lots of useful information such as maintenance tips, repair procedures, etc. etc. 
The community around these printers are also growing fast. It's possible to see tools and upgrades as well as different enclosure ideas online. Some of these enclosures were designed to fully cover the printer, allowing it to print filaments that without it would be very difficult. For these cases, the enclosures need to be printed with filament that can withstand hot environment temperatures such as ABS or ASA. To fully close the printer, some modifications need to be made to the PTFE tube and to the cable that goes to the print head. Because unlike the X1 series, on the P1P the PTFE tube and cable go straight up. As for printing with multiple colors, the P1P is also compatible with the AMS unit. And with the hub, it's possible to connect up to 4 AMS units and print up to 16 colors. So, here are the pros and cons of the P1P 3D printer. And for the positive side, same as the X1 series, this printer is ready to print in just a few minutes. We only need to remove the locking screws following the instructions on the screen and it's ready. The printer does not require much of those initial adjustments and calibrations since it's capable of doing them automatically. The entire structure of the printer is very well designed and very sturdy. It's fully customizable. There are several different enclosure designs that we can print and install on the printer. This means we can choose the type of enclosure and color. Aside from the official ones, there are also some from the community already available. The printer is also equipped with all the cool sensors such as the leveling sensor, the vibration compensation sensor, filament runout sensor and so on. It has the same Core XY mechanics as the previous X1 series. The P1P is capable of producing good quality prints while maintaining a high printing speed. It has a small but very good looking display and very easy to work with. The P1P is also equipped with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. The Bluetooth is used to set up the account and bind the printer with the app and slicer while the Wi-Fi is used to access and control the printer remotely. The print surface is a texturized magnetic steel plate. Also compatible with the AMS units, which means we can order the AMS and plug it in, and it will print with different colors. It's cheaper than the X1 and X1 Carbon. It's possible to upgrade with the lights, big cooling fan and camera if we want to. Bamboo Lab also includes their own slicer which works very well and it's very user-friendly. It has lots of support information on their wiki website as well as on the Facebook groups. And for the negative side, it's not enclosed so the noise while printing will be much more noticeable and also because of that some types of filament that need a controlled environment will be harder to print. And the hot end, which is not hardened steel, but stainless steel instead, which means that it is not compatible with every type of filament as the hardened steel is. It's not equipped with LiDAR sensor and is not even possible to upgrade it with the LiDAR sensor. Although the magnets on the bed that secure the print surface are very strong, their strength don't reach the corners. This means that with prints that reach the edges of the print surface, the corners of the plate can lift while printing. With that in mind, some users use clamps to hold the corners down. And there's even a model online you can print and that will fit for this purpose. On Bamboo Lab's website, there's also a table where we can check some of the major differences between the X1 Carbon, the X1 and the P1P printers. We have already a few videos about the X1 Carbon 3D printer, the Bamboo Lab slicer and the cell phone app, so don't miss those as well. And that's it you guys, hope you liked the video, we will see you guys next time, bye!